Okay, so I'm Ashley DePriest. I'm a uh, nutrition support dietitian in Northside Atlanta. Um, and first, I just want to say I'm uh, never going to look at H2 blockers and PPIs the same again. Ooh, um, so today I was asked to talk about choosing the right enteral formula for your ICU critically ill patient. And um, they mentioned that seven minute talk, and at first I was like, ooh, that is going to be difficult. But then I thought a little more about it, and I said, no, I can just say, Start a formula and consult your dietitian. Boom, done. That's all you gotta do. Um, but since I have a few more minutes to talk, I'll go ahead and go through um, some of the um, some of the different types of formulas today. Um, small shameless plug: find me on Twitter. Um, I'm very active. I love talking to people about enteral nutrition and nutrition in general. So check me out there. Um, so there's four types of uh, main types of enteral nutrition formulas. There's standard formulas. There's elemental or semi-elemental formulas, immune modulating formulas, and disease-specific disease formulas. So we're going to go through quickly each type. Uh, first, you have your standard formula. This is your workforce type formula. Um, they may or may not have fiber. They um, um, are just a good formula to start for anyone. You can really just start this at any you know, 10, 20, 30 cc's an hour. Um, most patients are going to do okay with this in the ICU. Um, quick, just a quick clarification here. I've added some names of formulas just for you guys to know to kind of trigger like this is what that, that type of formula is. But this is in no way an endorsement of any of these specific types of formulas. Um, so again, this is your best type of formula to just go ahead and get started until you can consult your dietitian to talk a little bit more about um, a specialized formula. Um, the next type of formula is an elemental or semi-elemental formula. And we also refer to this as a hydrolyzed formula. And basically what that means is it's also what we kind of call a pre-digested formula. Um, most, of the, most of the components of that formula is already broken down. So for example, your peptides, your proteins are broken. Those peptide bonds are broken. That might be why they call it peptamin is a type of formula, um, an elemental or semi-elemental formula. Um, we use this typically for patients that have maybe um, are experiencing a lot of diarrhea. Um, or also um, if they have any sort of pancreatic insufficiency. And the reason for that is because, again, the formulas are already pre-digested, so you don't need all of the pancreatic enzymes in order to absorb the formula. And there's a couple of um, examples of these things. Next, we have immune modulating. And I know there's tons of words on this slide, um, and we're trying to avoid that. But essentially what immune modulating formulas are is they contain a little bit of extra supplemental nutrients. So most of the time it's going to be arginine, glutamine, nucleic acids, omega-3s. Um, and the best data and the best indication for this is in your surgical trauma, burn, or head and neck cancer patients. Um, we should not be using this formula routinely, though. This is not one you want to start at a trickle rate or trophic rate. This is not one you want to start routinely and then consult the dietitian. First of all, it's an extremely expensive formula in most cases. Um, but most of the time, in order to get the benefits of all of these extra added nutrients, you need to be feeding at least 60 to 80% of their needs. Um, so again, we try not to use this to start or to, um, to just troph trophic or trickle feed patients because it's very expensive and, and you're not going to see the added benefits of those nutrients. Um, unless you're getting at least 60 to 80 percent. Um, immune modulating formulas can come in a standard formula or they can also be el elemental or semi-elemental. So um, some examples of that would be pivot, impact, or impact peptides. Um, disease specific formulas. Uh, this is kind of one of my favorite things to talk about because it's super easy. There is no indication for the use of disease specific formulas in critically ill patients. Most studies that have looked at using renal formulas, for example, um, have shown no difference in um, electrolytes or VUNs or renal function. Um, so they really aren't helpful in our critically ill patients. And what that really means is that it's not usually the nutrition that's causing that issue. Um, but with that, I will say that sometimes we do get to that point where, where you know, we have just a super high uh, potassium or something we are trying to avoid, but we still want to get that protein. So it may be helpful, but certainly we're not, you know, this patient, oh, they have renal failure, go ahead and put them on a renal formula. That's not how that works. Um, we're really just treating symptoms of, of renal failure in that case. Um, there are hepatic formulas that contain branched chain amino acids. Again, the data for those isn't super great. Um, they're extremely expensive formulas, so we try to avoid the use of routine use of those as well. And then finally, um, we've got a lot of those lung and respiratory specific formulas out there. Uh, I think one example would be Oxipa. Um, the newer data around those have, have suggested that really it wasn't maybe the um, composition of that formula or the special 
uh, components of that formula that helped, but it actually was probably that we were providing patients with more protein, and that actually was what was improving their outcomes in that case. Um, some other considerations quickly we'll go through <clears throat> when choosing a formula is, oh, is your um, osmolality of the formula. So the more calories you have in a formula, they typically tend to be more concentrated, and this can certainly cause diarrhea. We've seen that before. So we know the GI tract is about around a concentration of 300, and these are just some examples of what the concentrations are of various concentrations of formula. So that's just a good slide to refer to. Um, fiber is also another consideration. So of course, we don't recommend the routine use of fiber in the ICU. And that is because there's a, a risk for um, gut ischemia. So the fiber can kind of slow the gut down and it can sit, cause the formula to sit there and cause ischemia. Uh, but we can use a little bit of insoluble or soluble fiber if we need to. But the important take home point there is just remember there are two different types of fiber. Don't you routinely use them. Again, talk with a dietitian if you have more questions about that. And then of course we have some extra modulars that we can use to help meet people's um, protein. Um, so to kind of wrap things up, the uh, Aspen FCCM guidelines, um, again, recommend just the routine use of a standard formula for all ICU patients. Um, specialized formulas are not indicated most of the time, but if you ever have questions about it, um, again, consult your, your dietitian, and if nothing else, you'll just make us feel really great. <laughs> so, thank you.